Welcome! In this tutorial, I'm going to briefly discuss methods used in comparing two population means and also conduct an equal variances t test. Samples from two populations could either be independent, that is, unrelated, or dependent, that is, related, repeated, or correlated. If the samples are independent and the population variances are known, we conduct a z test. If the population variances are unknown, we conduct a t-test. If there is no significant difference between the population variances, we conduct an equal variances t-test. If the population variances differ significantly, we conduct an unequal variances t-test. For dependent samples, we conduct a match period t-test. In testing if there is a difference between two means, for independent samples, the null hypothesis will state that the means are equal, which we also write as mean 1 minus mean 2 equals 0. And the alternative will be that the difference between the means is not equal to 0. These are for two tail tests. For one tail test, here are the hypotheses for the left tail test, and here they are for the right tailed test. For testing if a difference exists in dependent t tests, the null hypothesis for a two-tail test will be that the population mean difference, mu d, is equal to zero, and the alternative will be that the mean difference is not equal to zero. Here are the hypotheses for the left tail test, and here they are for the right tail test. Let's now conduct our hypothesis test. Here we want to test if full-time students spend more time per week studying stats than part-time students. Since the data here consists of two unrelated groups and the population standard deviations or variances are not known, an independent t-test is appropriate. If we let mu f and mu p represent the population mean study time for full-time and part-time students respectively, then the alternative hypothesis will be mu f greater than mu p or mu f minus mu p greater than zero. The null hypothesis will then be that mu f minus mu p is less or equal to zero. Next, I'm going to launch Excel to generate the statistics for the test. Here in Excel, click the data tab and click data analysis. If you scroll to the bottom here, you will find the four tests for comparing two means. In our case, the samples are independent so we cannot conduct a match pairs test. Because the population standard deviations or variances are unknown, we cannot conduct a z-test either. To decide whether to conduct an equal or an unequal variances t-test, we usually conduct an f-test for two sample variances here. Select full time for variable 1, part time for variable 2. Check labels and click OK. The one tailed p value here is usually multiplied by 2 to obtain a two tailed p value, and it is large enough to tell us there is no significant difference in population variances. That aside, we can also see here that the variances are very close, so we conduct an equal variances t test. Click Data, Data Analysis, Select t-test to sample assuming equal variances and click OK. For variable 1 range, I'm going to select full time. And for variable 2, part time. For hypothesized mean difference, I'm going to input 0 or just leave it blank. Note that if we're testing whether the difference is more than 5, for example, we just enter 5 here. I'm going to check labels because I selected the labels and then click OK. And here is the output on a different sheet. Here is the cleaned up output from Excel. For the critical or rejection region, we have a significance level alpha of 0.05 and this is a one tailed test, so we use the one tailed critical value here. It's a right tailed test, so we reject the null hypothesis if the test statistic is greater than positive 1.691. The test statistic is t 
equals 0.587. We can now make a decision on whether or not to reject the null hypothesis. The test statistic 0.587 is not greater than 1.691, so we do not reject the null hypothesis. We can also see that the one-tailed p-value here is greater than 0.05, telling us again not to reject the null hypothesis. As a result, we cannot support the alternative. That is, there is not enough evidence to conclude that full-time students spend more time studying stats than part-time students. And that concludes the test. Thanks for watching.